Hi, I'm Megan, and I'm going to be giving a brief demo of the EventFlow Visual Analytics tool. EventFlow is designed to facilitate analysis, query, and data transformation over temporal event data sets. These are data sets that track entities such as patients and the events that happen to them across time, such as medications and treatments. Now, when you talk about visualizing a data set like this, you're usually talking about a display that looks a lot like this. So you see each patient laid out across its own row, and you can see every event that happens to them across time. What's interesting here is this. Look how much you would have to scroll just to see this entire data set. This makes it really difficult to provide users with population insights about their data set. So the goal of EventFlow is to create an aggregated display to better facilitate these population level analyses and insights. So how do we do this? We start by taking a single record and compressing it down vertically to a series of color-coded bars. So now, when you have multiple patient records, we begin to create the aggregated display by aligning each record by the first event in the sequence. In this case, all the patients have the same first event, so we consolidate them into a single vertical bar. We then look at the next event in each record and sort them by the frequency of that event. In this case, more patients have a blue event next, and fewer patients have an orange event next. We then consolidate those events into, again, a vertical colored bar. We move on again to the next event in the sequence. There's no need to sort here, so we consolidate these events again into vertical bars, and we continue in this way until we've aggregated the entire data set into a single consolidated display. The height of each bar represents the number of records consolidated into that bar, and the horizontal axis is time. Now to demonstrate the use of this aggregated display, I'm going to be running through a real case study we did with the pediatric trauma unit. The difficulty with pediatric traumas is that children have a difficult time communicating to doctors accurately what's wrong with them. This can lead to doctors potentially missing ailments that could be potentially life-threatening. To prevent this from happening, the trauma team is required to complete a series of steps in a very specific order called the ABCDEs. They should check the patient's airway, then breathing, then check for circulation, then check for disability, which is a GCS rating that determines how alert the patient is, and then they do what's called the secondary survey where they scan the patient from head to toe to make sure there are no visible external injuries. So the question that this trauma team had was how well was their team following this series of steps, and when they weren't following this series of steps, how were they deviating from this sequence? The goal was to identify areas where they were frequently deviating from the sequence in order to improve performance. So despite this seemingly simple question, the initial data set we got was far from simple. So as you can see, there are a bunch of extraneous events and misrepresented events, and the resulting display is very cluttered and essentially unintelligible. You can't tell if this process, this ABCDE process is happening, if it's not happening, you can't make any valuable insight from this display. But using event flow, you can really do a lot to clean up a data set like this and narrow down on the events that are interesting to you. So the first thing we can do over in our legend here is remove events that are not pertinent to this ABCDE process. So the IV time we can get rid of, uh, the oxygen time we can get rid of, uh, temperature, gone, blanket time, gone, and pupil time, gone. So already we've made a big dent in having this data set seem a little more manageable, a little more easy to read. So the next thing that these researchers did, which actually I thought was clever, is they color-coded this ABCDE event process according to the rainbow, which actually makes it much easier to see when the process is actually happening in the correct order. So let's get our rainbow going. All right, so the first thing to notice here is we have airway events, breathing events, and we have our GCS or disability rating in the secondary survey. But the way this data set was recorded, it contains two different types of pulse reading, a central pulse reading and a distal pulse reading. The reason for this is that doctors will check for a distal pulse or a pulse at the patient's extremity, and if they don't find it, they'll check for a more central pulse around the heart. However, for this ABCDE process, this distinction is irrelevant. All this ABCDE process relies on or cares about is that the pulse was checked at some time during this process. So having these two events representing uh, pulse checks, it really it complicates the data set unnecessarily. So how can we clean this up? Well, we can use EventFlow's query and find and replace system to replace these pulse events with a better representation of what's happening. So the first thing we're going to do is do a query for the distal pulse, and we're going to replace it with a new event we're going to create that's going to be called simply any pulse. We're going to make it green so we do not stray from our rainbow, which we must adhere to at any cost. 
So we're going to do this first replacement. So now in the data set, all the distal pulse events have been replaced with this any pulse event. And we're going to do the same thing with the central pulse. So we're going to do a search for the central pulse. And we're going to replace it again with this event that we just created called any pulse. And replace. So now instead of either having one of these events or both of these events in some order, patients either have one of these pulse events or two of these pulse events. So we can actually clean this up further. So now we're going to do a query for all the patient records that have two of these any pulse events. And we're going to replace it with a single pulse event that's going to occur when the first pulse was checked. So basically, um, oops, what am I doing here? Here we go, any pulse. So basically what this is going to do, it's going to flag every record with a single pulse event that occurred when the doctors first confirmed that the patient tried to check, had a pulse and tried to check a pulse. So we're going to do this replacement. All right. So now we get a much better picture. And if you can see here at the top, there's this huge chunk of patients that have the correct sequence. So the ABCDE process is in the exact right order. So we can click here and we get a number of these patients. So 104 out of 215 patients have the process occurring in the exact right order. And this was actually surprising to these researchers. They thought that this process would be occurring in the right order uh, far more frequently, certainly more frequently than, you know, less than half the time. So what we can do now is we can remove these uh, records from the data set altogether. This allows us to really zero in on only the patients that had these divergent sequences. And so you can get a sense now um, of what type of sequences were the most frequent divergences. And what these researchers saw is that a lot of events were occurring after the secondary survey had started. So what they did is they aligned the entire data set by the start of the secondary survey and this allowed them to confirm that indeed the biggest chunk of patients that diverged from the intended sequence uh, diverged in the way that they had uh, the GCS time being recorded during the secondary survey. So this was really helpful to these researchers. They actually thought that there was going to be maybe one or two different ways that uh, the sequence was being deviated from. And what they found was that there were a whole host of different ways. And so instead of being able to provide feedback on one or two different mistakes, they found themselves sort of not knowing how to correct this problem. And so actually what they decided to do as a result of this study is to rerun the study and do a second data collection, but also include uh, attributes about how the patient fared after this trauma experience to try to get a better understanding of which deviations from this sequence actually affect patient outcomes. So to them, this was a great tool for simplifying their data set, uh, understanding what was happening to these patients, and communicating with their colleagues and peers about what their findings were. So hopefully that gave you a better idea of what event flow can do and how it can be used. We're always looking for new collaborators with data sets that can be analyzed in EventFlow. So if you have data that you're interested in using EventFlow on, uh, you can contact me at matyj at umd.edu, or you can visit our EventFlow project page as part of the HCIL website. Thanks.